Hey guys, here's what we're going to do today. The initial plan was to get up early, get the boat, and head to the lake, go fish. And it was raining about five this morning, and it looked like it was going to rain for quite a while after. So I changed my mind, drove about 40 minutes north of my house where it wasn't raining. I'm at the small city park pond that Bob and I fish from time to time. And today we're going to fish it with the man's bait company, Franken Toad. That's all we're going to use. I'm going to fish this three ways. I've got it on a uh, weighted hook. We're going to fish it just as a creature bait. We're going to put it on a chatter bait, and we're going to put it on a jig. We'll see if it catches any fish. Stick with me. fish the green stuff. Now I was watched some deal. I thought somebody referred to these are always always call these just as little green beads on top of the water. Well at least somebody said it's called duckweed. I don't know if that's accurate or not. If that's really what it's called. Or if this person didn't know what they were talking about, I don't know. I've always liked it. It provides some shade, but you can still punch a lure through it real easy. And the fish do tend to hang out underneath it. They get that protection from the sun. And you can get a lure through this stuff pretty good until it gets real thick. Once it gets real thick, yeah, then not so well. But you can tell that if you throw it and it just lands on top and doesn't sink, well, that ain't gonna work. There we go. Oh, had him and missed him. All right. Not quite such a bouncing act here as it was the last spot. There we go. Got one I got. All right, that'll give him a little time, but we pulled him, pulled him out of there. Not huge, but, oh, come here. There we go. All right, pull one out. Frank and Toad on the weighted hook. Let's see if we find another one of those. We'll show that on film, do we? Tree branches, huh? Don't have those in the boat. Well, not too often you worry about that with a the boat. Never got him. <laughs> he weren't very big, though. <laughs> Sorry about jerking you out of the water, buddy. I thought you were bigger than that. A little one, but I guess you know Frank and Bait will take them bigger, little either one, huh? All right, did a couple working the Frank and Toad uh, with a weighted hook as a creature bait. Now let's turn around. Let's put that Frank and Toad on a chatter bait. Uh, this one happens to be the Chartreuse Pepper. Let's see if we can try in this way and see what happens. All right. See if we can get this uh, Frank and Toad to work with the chatterbait, huh? There we go. Run off the bat. Like that. There we are. Boo! Slick bank here. Gotta be careful on the rocks. All right. Nice well, popped him right in the top, didn't I? There we go. There we go. And basically, guys, it's just uh, all I've done now is moved over to a chatterbait. I'm using the uh, chartreuse pepper on this one. Uh, I was using uh, green pumpkin a little bit earlier, so I don't know if color is going to matter a whole lot. The thing I love about this is all the legs on this thing. I'll tell you, there's a lot of movement. This works real well on the chatterbait. Yeah, well, let's see if we can find another one on that, huh? Looks like they're underneath this green 
I don't know, duckweed or whatever they call this stuff. If that's accurate. Heard somebody say that's what it is. I don't know if that person knows what they're talking about. Oh, there we go. Oh, and he threw it. Had him out there and he threw it. He was a little ways out there. Go back, see if there's another one there. Okay, we've used the Franken toad as just a creature bait on a one eighth ounce weighted hook. We've then put it on a chatter bait, ran that for a while. Now we're going to change around again. We're going to put it on a football head jig. So we'll see if we can do it. A lot of vegetation here. I don't know how well this is going to work, but uh, let's give her a try on a jig and see if we can do something third different way. There we go. Oh, I missed it. He hit it on the fall. There we go, got it. Got that one. All right. There we go. Frank and Toad with a jig. Just had to get out where, where they were. All right. So basically what we got, guys, just the, uh, your basic weedless jig, football head, Three eighths ounce. The Franken toad. I think now I'm going with the uh, purple. Looks like one of my legs are missing. We'll have to see if this will still catch. Can a one-legged Franken toad still catch fish? If not, I got to go back and get another one. All right, we're going to do this in the shade. It's getting pretty hot out here. Franken toad by the Man's Bait Company. Found these last March. You know. Bob and I mentioned we've used their jelly worm for over 40 years. Once I got to the website in about March, I found a lot of other lures they had, and which includes the Franken toad. This thing has got more arms and legs on it, more appendages to give you movement. So I immediately had to buy some of these, and I've loved them. I've used them. Uh, they've probably accounted for three or four, four to five pound bass for me so far just this year. Here's the thing about the Franken toad and a lot of the other lures from the Man's Bait Company. They have what they call a hard nose. And that is the plastic on the nose is harder than the rest of the bait. And we all know that's the part that usually goes first. Whether it's a plastic worm or whatever, that's the part that starts getting tore up and how we always take our 10 inch worms and we bring them down to nine inches because we're pulling the nose. The hard nose really helps these last a lot longer. Uh, as far as versatility, I mean, you saw it today. I started out just as a creature bait on a weighted hook, moved it over to a chatter bait, and moved it over to a jig, and it caught fish all the way around. I do want to mention one thing concerning the weighted hook. Okay, a lot of guys, you've got your weighted hook. I like this because the lures tend to fall flat instead of on the nose, so I kind of like that. But you got to get that nose over the weight all the time. And I've seen guys cutting line and putting it on. But what I do, and I've done it with all mine, I use the weighted hook, let me get up where you get it, see it maybe, with the spring on it, see if you can see that or not. That's got the spring, and basically you just screw the nose onto the hook, then bring it down, bring it up through, and rig it weedless. To me, that's a whole lot easier. It seems like it's a lot easier on the lure, especially with the hard nose here, just screw that thing down, and boy, I'll tell you, it's there for however many fish you're gonna catch before it finally starts wearing out. So that's my preference. That's just me. Somebody else might like to do it differently. That's the way I like to do it anyway. So anyway, the Franken Toad, I think it's great all around soft plastic. Use it by itself. I said, use it with a chatterbait, use it with a jig. There's you know, all kinds of ways you can use it. But I would look at some, I really like them. Uh, bought some, I'm definitely gonna be buying some more. 
So that's it, Frank and Toad Man's Bait Company. Thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to our channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.